hot, move your chair over, grab a hymn book. We need to use the hymn book. Learn to read the music notes. We're on page 161, and I think I heard Dr. Burton say that was a B-flat chord. A B-flat tonight, probably. Help me out, buddy. Singing 161. The comforter has come. And we'll sing two verses, please. And then Brother Don has some special music after these two verses. Oh, spread your tiny crown. Yeah. 
portion back to you and others around the world would come to know you through Bibles or through missionary work. In Jesus' powerful name, we do pray. Pray as we receive this offering. Thank you. Amen.
Let me remind you before we go on with this uh, that our list is getting very lengthy. It does happen time to time. So you know if someone whose prayers have been answered, let us know so we take their names uh, off the list. Uh, and that will help us out. Um, I had a great friend, Linwood Wilson, that came to my birthday party. And he was here with us in the church. Many of you came to love him. Pray for him. He's going to have open heart surgery. He has to have his valve. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But the only thing he's worried about when you get that valve, it's a big valve. And every time you pass a butt boat, you weren't rolling it. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets himself going to only kill one time. Here we are. All right, someone else. Yeah. Okay, I have a praise report. Okay, and I'd like to tell what exactly happened so you know God had mercy on these people. I have a friend her daughter and her grandbaby were in that wreck. They were in a pickup truck and an 18 wheeler didn't even stop, just rolled right on them, pushed the bed of the truck up into the cab. They had three dogs, her little five year old granddaughter. They came home from the hospital, no broke bones, they have a lot of uh, stitches and everything, but no, God is a good God. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Let me give a little testimony. That reminded me. I was coming home Tuesday morning yesterday from taking my daughter to the airport. She had been here to help take care of my, my wife. Uh, my daughter that was having surgery. And I was taking her back to the airport on my way home. On Interstate 75 at the Big Bend exit. Yep. Traffic was backed up. I was within one or two seconds behind the accident. Oh. There was a car in the lane that was big, almost looked like a, a, a new truck, pickup truck. He was in the exit lane, and I don't know for what reason, he decided to come out of the exit lane and he just swerved out. Right in front of a semi. Oh, oh, my God. Well, the semi hit him, and I'm right behind the semi. Oh, my God. The semi hit him, knocked his truck back into the lane, and traffic it was waiting to get off. Three or four cars there, and he hit. Then the semi, the trailer, just went over it. Well, the semi tried to swerve him into it, and the trailer just rolled, rolled over and over and oh. over. And uh, what a mess. And so, I, I mean, I was within seconds of him being a part of that. Yeah. So I just thank the Lord for taking care of us. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. 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 The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And things like this help build our faith. So if you've got a good report, you know, that's encouraging, then, then share it with us. That's good. Someone else now? And spoken request tonight. All right. Well, let's just go to the Lord in prayer, brother Dave. How about leading us? Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the opportunity to come tonight and worship you, to study the Word. We heard these requests, and we pray that Father, you would answer them according to your grace and mercy. Father, just teach us your way. Help us to be more like Christ every day. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Jeff, give her that mic. Now, Sister Jean. Jean. Is there any here? Jean. Yeah. 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 Here, you're this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here it is. Here, buddy, you touch me too. Test. Now yeah, you're on. I got baby prints, so I don't have to wear my glasses. <laughs> Ready? Yes, sir. I think so. <laughs>
Amen. Well, we've got a very, 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 very good Thank you so much for being here in prayer meeting tonight. And Miss Ann Shelton, of course, she's been coming down and helping also with Miss Pat. Amen. They're trying to be careful, her and wife. And so, but they said, tell everybody hello. And they're doing well. She's doing well. And she's been a blessing also. And so, we're grateful for our church. Yes. We're grateful for your prayers. And there's moments, I uh, see this one, but it'd be okay. There's moments that Miss Pat is so impacted. There's moments. And it's just amazing sometimes. And uh, how she's doing and how well she's doing. And uh, Miss Darla took her out today for the first time since uh, she did. You know, the surgery, first surgery, and uh, Miss Pat had two, two, not one, two milkshakes. <laughs> <laughs> she loved her milkshakes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, anyway, thank you so much. Well, tonight, I don't know how many more, this may be my final series on the Antichrist, but we, first night, we talked about the person of the Antichrist. Uh, last week we talked about the personality of the Antichrist. Tonight we'll deal somewhat with the power of the Antichrist. And uh, this is, uh, there's just so much you can go on and on and on uh, when you start dealing in subjects and prophetic messages like these and, and uh, the work of the Antichrist. And you know we're living in such a, a time that none of us never thought we'd live to see what we're seeing today uh, in our America. Uh, you know, we're not surprised about what we see around the world, but we are shocked at what we see uh, in America. Uh, is it this? I know it's Johnson. Is that? She just gave me a what? Did I say your name wrong? Yeah. John. 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 She just gave me a piece of paper, a document showing that approximately what year was that? 1983. 1983, Congress of the United States of America. Now that's what, 40 years ago? Mm -hmm. Right at 40 years ago. Declared the Bible to be the Word of God. Yeah. What do you think they would do today? <laughs> I mean, this is in the history of our Congress that in 1983 they made a declaration that the Bible will work out. My, we've come up long way since then in the wrong direction. And, but uh, I, I was thinking about uh, when she showed me that. I got to thinking about Dwight Eisenhower, uh, what in, 19, in the 50s, the early 50s, um, had one nation under uh, under God. Uh, Put into the pledge of allegiance, one nation under God. I wonder if you're trying to do that today. <laughs> what the Congress would prevail against. And so we're living in days uh, that we never thought we would see uh, in our lifetime. Uh, things that are going on. We've always talked about the Lord is coming. We preached about it. We believe it. We know it's going to happen. And we've read the book of Revelation. We've talked about the book of Daniel and all of the prophecies there. We're going to deal with a little bit of that tonight. And, uh, and here we are living in an era of time when we're seeing a lot of this being fulfilled right before our eyes. And so, uh, the power. The, uh, the Webster's Dictionary uh, this uses the definition of anti, where we get the word anti-Christ, but anti means to be the opposite or against. Reveling, supplanting, the one who supersedes or causes another to be set aside. That's the definition in Webster's Dictionary. And I understand now they've got to rewrite all the dictionaries to make them mean what the modern day 
people wanted to be. Yeah. Uh, so we are living in strange, strange times. And uh, so what was the main purpose? Or what is the main purpose of Antichrist? And here it is to turn the world against Christ. And to draw all mankind unto him, the Antichrist. That is the that is the operation going of the of the Antichrist. That's what we see happening. It's been going on for two thousand years, but it seems like it's coming to a climatic head uh, in our lifetime. Which means, and the good news is this, we may be living in the day of the rapture. We may be the ones who are living. We don't know what generation that's going to be. But uh, I'm going to tell you, if it keeps going at the speed that it's going, accelerating like it's accelerating, uh, many of us may live uh, to be caught up together uh, in the air to be with the Lord. And so that will be a great thing, or that will be a positive thing. Amen. But we sure hate to see uh, what is happening around the world, and especially in our own country, that uh, was a country that God has established here on the earth to really, I think, spread the gospel of Jesus Christ into all of the world. And uh, the Antichrist has come in the spirit of Antichrist has come upon us. He's come upon America. He's come upon the church. He's come upon those of us who believe the word of God. So tonight we're going to take the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 11. I'm just going to read a few more verses there that I normally read from uh, a message, but verses 36 to 45 that sets the really the, of everything that is going on. And uh, so we're going to look at it tonight. I'll probably make some comments as we read through it. it says, and the king shall go accordingly to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself. Talking now about the Antichrist who wants to set himself up to be the king, to be God, to be worshipped, and uh, to magnify himself above every God, and shall speak marvelous things against the God of God. So the rebellion against God is the rebellion against the, the God of all gods. He wants to be above that. He wants to. He would remember this. He would. Kicked out of heaven because of his desire to be worshipped even above God. And uh, how that is beyond my comprehension. I don't even try to figure it out. I don't even try to say, uh, well, why would anyone created by God, an angelic being created by God, there in heaven, all the beauty, all the wonder, how could he be? Uh, jealousy developed in his heart, but it did. I don't understand how all of it, but you know what? I just believe it happened because the Word of God says it. That's all I need to know. That's all you need to know. But he, has, he walks against God of God and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. His rebellion, the final act of his rebellion, and for that, it determined shall be done. Now, that's an interesting. It shall be done. In other words, it's going to happen. The rise of the Antichrist is going to happen. Right. Uh, the rapture is going to happen. <laughs> that's the good news, amen? amen. But uh, the bad news is we get to see a world. We get to see a generation falling into the hands of one who's going to destroy it. The Antichrist. And we see it And, uh, you know, I made a statement Sunday, and I, I should have probably explained myself a little better because of the pandemic that we're living in and people are out of church. But I said Sunday, probably over 50%, and probably over that because of the, the virus, over 50% of the people who claim to be Christians don't even go to church. Yeah. Right, right. And so, we're living in an era of coldness. Spiritual coldness. People who say they're saved. People who say they love God. And uh, so, anyway, let's go to verse number 37. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, 
nor the desire of women. This is a description of the of the person uh, and his power and about him. Uh, he won't. He, he doesn't regard the God of his father. I was thinking about that, and I don't. I can't show you this in a positively way, but that might indicate that he might be a Jew of Jewish descent. Breaking the tradition of the gods of his father, the heritage. I don't. I. I. I, I can't be positive on that. I just throw that up to you. You can think about it, study it if you want to. But uh, he shall uh, neither shall he regard the gods of his father, nor the desire of women. So he will be unmarried. He, nor regard any god. For he shall magnify himself. Well, that's the that's the, the thing that has brought him down to start with, and he continues uh, in that. He never repented of that, of course, and uh, he still wants to magnify himself. So the main purpose of the Antichrist is to turn the world against Christ, and uh, he does not have any regard for the God of his fathers. No desire for women. Uh, the vision of the Antichrist, uh, we're going to find out in verses, uh, uh, let's go and read. But in his estate shall he honor the God of source, and a God whom his father knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and precious stone and pleasant things. Let's go to the next verse. What, what are we in? That's it. We should be. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. But it should be, we should be in, in verse number 36, 37. Are in 39? Yeah. Will we ever read 38? Yeah. yeah. Thank you all for keeping me up. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lord. You're doing a good job. It's all me. Thus shall he do in the most strong hold with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. He shall cause them to rule over men, and shall divide the land for gain. So we're going to find out that the, the people of the power structure of the world will be coming and bowing down to him and doing his will. And his call that and, and, uh, them rule over many, and he shall divide the land for gain. Let's go to the next verse. And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him, like their war with, with chariots, with horsemen, and with many ships. And he shall enter into the country, and shall overflow and pass over. Go verse number 41. We're going to go all the way to verse uh, 45. He shall enter into his glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown. He shall become the power of the world. But these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab, and the chief of the children of the Haman. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries of the land of Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power. That's the whole thing tonight of the study is to realize the power that he is going to exert all over the world and the world leaders of the world will eventually bow down to him and do his bidding. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over all of the precious things of Egypt and the uh, Barbarians and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. They'll be there bowing and worshiping and doing his bidding and doing his will. Verse 44. The tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fear to destroy and utterly to make away men. And he shall plant the tabernacle of his palace between the seas in the glorious 
holy God. Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. So here we, Daniel said he saw all of this. And uh, over in Daniel, preceding that, in this, all of this revelation, over in Daniel chapter 8, we back up a little bit, verses number 26 and 27. Daniel said he saw all of that and it made him sick. The prophecy that God was revealing to him made him sick in his stomach. And then he began to real. Are we, and the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Wherefore, shut up thou the vision, for it shall be for many days. Verse 27. And I, Daniel, fainted. And I was sick. I think he just sick to his stomach. To see what was going to happen. To see the rise of the Antichrist and how he would overrule and people would bow down to him. And he would be worshiping him. He said, I was sick certain days. Afterward, I arose up and I did the king's business. And I was astonished at the vision that none understood. And so all of that was there and Daniel had revealed all of that to us. And we begin to see these things coming to pass. I don't know about you. And I watch my TV the news. And I read, I don't read the paper no more. You know, there's one thing, good thing happened with this event. The trash paper only comes out twice a week. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. I don't get it every day. And uh, I don't get to read it now anymore. It's just, I, I, <laughs> Miss Darla likes the paper for her dog cages. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the only reason I can. But anyway, that's another story. But it makes you sick. It makes you sick when you see what's happening in our country. It makes you sick when you see churches empty, closed. Churches are going to be set on fire and burned. And uh, destroyed. Christians are going to be persecuted. Not the era that we're living in. We are now the in the minority. Now I'm talking about race, I'm talking about in our belief. Yeah. In our trust in the Lord. And so Daniel said, he seen this vision, he said he was sick. Then I read the word of God and I see what's happening. I see it's coming to pass. And it does make us sick. All of us. So we see the power of the Antichrist. Chapter 13 of the book of Revelation, verses 4, 5, and 6, we see the, the power of the great of, of the Antichrist. Uh, the great uh, power was given unto him. Now look at verse, chapter 13. And they worshiped the dragon. And they gave power unto the beast. People would yield over everything to him. And uh, they worship the beast. Say, isn't it amazing? People will worship the lie quicker than they'll worship the yeah. truth. Yeah. 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 It's amazing. Yeah. 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 The world will worship the false god and refuse to worship the truth. That's right. That's right. People had rather believe a lie than the truth. Right. Right. It's just part of the old sin nature. Of mankind. So they worship the dragon and gave power unto the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? For who is able to make war with him? He's so powerful, he's so mighty. No one will challenge him. Because he has conquered. Yeah. All. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things, great over to life, trapping the people in the last things, power was given to him to continue for 40 and 2 months. That's where we, the, the last half of the tribulation period, that, that's three and a half years, 42 months. The first half of the tribulation period, I think, will be where he really begins to pull together the power of the world by trying to appeal to 
And then when he has the power, then when things are under his control, that'll be the last half. And that's where you begin to see all of the devastation that you read in the book of Revelation began to take place. So it's a seven year tribulation period. But the last three and a half is where we see here that he, that, uh, he really unfolds who he really is and comes out against the whole world. And he opened in his mouth to blaspheme against God. The blaspheme in his name, his tabernacle, and then the dwell in heaven. He can't, he can't just stop here. He's still got to curse those who are in hell. You're talking about bitterness. You're talking about envy, strife. You see, you got to remember where did all that come? He got kicked out of heaven. And therefore he resents envies, resents hates. Those who, of us, who will be caught up into heaven. Amen. He hates God. He hates the throne of God. He hates everything, that, everything in heaven. And so here we see that his mouth is full of blasphemy against God. The blasphemy is name, his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. So here we see that the power of the Antichrist is, uh, is giving great power in this world. And then when we look at Revelation chapter 13, verses 13 and 15, he sits in the, temp the temple of the there and performs miracles. And he does great wonders. You know, I'll show you this. And he great, so that he make his fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. I mean, the world is going to be amazed that this, this man is so powerful. Amen. He, can, he can speak and fire comes down out of heaven. No, I mean, the whole world will fear him. And rightfully so. And, uh, and, and he deceives them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he has power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had the, the wound by a sword and, and did live. So here is, just have, hang up there, there for just a minute. He'll do miracles. I may not should say this, but I will say it to you. Now, often we have to be scared. No, we have to be cautious about miracles. Mm. Uh, the Antichrist will use miracles to deceive. Sometimes this thought comes to me today, and I want to share it. I've been over the years going to the hospital, visit with people that. Never had any inkling of God in their life. And they'll, God will be merciful to them, and maybe they'll, and they'll say, Boy, God answered my prayer to perform a miracle. And I just say this, I don't know what I'm I said, I think of myself. Satan uses a miracle. I just wonder sometimes that some of these people who, I mean, they never go to church, they never read their Bible, they never profess anything. Others say, oh, I just believe in God. And when God answers prayer, and he miraculously heals you. I just wonder sometimes, I don't want this to be a fact. I just wonder sometimes it's not just the spirit of any to make them think they have something that they don't have. I mean, I've heard that many times in my life. But, godly people, when the Lord answered my prayer, a 
over here. Well, the Antichrist is a miracle worker. He's going to deceive a multitude of people. People are going to say, man, he's God. God did this. It was nothing but the devil. The deceit. The blasphemy. The one who is trying to turn this whole world against God. And so, let's go to one. Well, we got one more verse or so there? No, that's the last verse, isn't it? Yeah. Have one of, so, I said here, you know, he'll sit in the temple. And I was thinking about this. Jesus was there in the temple and did a lot of his miracles. You had all that the pool where Jesus would heal the blind, the lame, near the temple area. I wonder this. This again, this is just the fall. Is, is the Antichrist will not try to mock and, and reproduce the same miracles yeah. in the temple area that Christ did? Yeah. Just the fall. Yeah. Just to, you know, he did it, I can do it too. Yeah. And deceive the whole world. Now they'll believe the end of Christ. Jesus did the miracles and they rejected him. And the end of Christ will perform the miracle. Probably over the very same ground. Same location. And they'll bow down and worship him. Because he's so powerful. Not realizing they rejected the God of all power. Not of all creation. The God that had the power to forgive us and die upon the cross and save us from our sin. But the world will had rather believe a lie that's right. than the truth. Amen. I guess that explains why so much is popular with the media. The world had rather believe a lie. Than the truth. And so we're living those days. Let me just bring this thing to a close. Um, he can call power down from heaven. He can um, make an image. The Bible says he can make an image speak. You know, if you're, let's just assume or say for the illustration purpose that you're there and you're seeing all this happen. God, we won't be there. Thank God we know the truth. Thank God we know a deceiver is coming that the world will bow at him and worship him. But it only lasts for three and a half years, 42 months. Then the real God comes. Almighty God comes. The Bible says He'll come with an army of the saints with Him. Now He won't need us, but we'll get to be spectators. Amen. Because all He has to do is speak. Yeah. That's all He has to do. There won't be no battle that you and I have to pick up a sword. God just speaks to But we'll be there, I believe, as witnesses. the work of our Lord, of our Savior Jesus Christ. And He will be witness to see God put down the Antichrist at the end of the tribulation when He comes again. Well, I did have some scripture wrote down here. First Thess 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 <laughs> verses 8 and 9 And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and he shall destroy him. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm glad I'm on the winning side. Yeah. Amen. You know, bless the Lord. We might go through some battles now, but that's okay as long as I know we're going to win. 
He's a loser. We're a winner. The wicked shall be revealed. The Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Let's go to the next verse. And uh, verse 8. What verse was that? Okay. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And so he is going to be uh, destroyed. The Lord will destroy with the brightness of his coming. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the words that God uses to describe all, the brightness of his coming. It's almost like when he appears. I, I'm right. If you look at the sun on a bright day, you will like it. I mean, you just stare at it if you want. If you imagine with the brightness of the coming Lord, and they look upon him, I mean, it would be like it. And so, the brightness of his coming, with all power, signs, and blindness, you know, who's coming in after the working of Satan, with all the power, signs, and So, you know, this just gives us a little bit of insight to where we are in life, where we are in the history of mankind. And I, you know, we're, you know, we're living in sad days, but can I turn it around? We're living in exciting days. It breaks our heart to see what we're seeing happen. But it's exciting to know that we know what's going to happen. Amen. And we know the end because we've read the last chapter. Yeah. <coughs> Amen. 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 So, I wouldn't trade places with anybody today. Wow. You know, they may cut my head off one day. <laughs> At least, I know I'm with the Lord. And that's our joy. That's our peace. So, may God just help us to stay faithful, to stay prayerful, and all that we do. And I'm preaching all Sunday. And uh, no matter what God allows us to go through, I don't know what God allowed the church to go through before He calls it all. Yeah. We don't know. It's going to get very dark just before the rapture. But what we're thinking. I think we're seeing the numbers go in. The faithfulness. We're seeing the number in the last day. And so may God help us. I'd love to be, like every preacher, I'd love to be preaching when the rapture takes place. I'd love to be in church when the rapture takes place. Amen. Amen. How about all of those so-called people who say they're saved and the rapture takes place and they're not in church? This day. Yeah. It goes on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> Amen. But uh, we can rejoice tonight to know that we're saved, to know that Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God, lives within us, born again, waiting for the Lord to come for us, to know that we have a place prepared in heaven by God for us already, already prepared and waiting. So we look forward to that. That's our hope. That's our encouragement. What keeps us going. Father, thank you for the promises. Thank you for revealing so much to us concerning the world and the work of the Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist. And Lord, we're kind of like Daniel. When we see what's going to happen, it makes us sick. Sick in our stomach shake in our spirit to see the world turn against the only one that can help the only true living God the one who loved them enough that he died upon the cross for their sin that all they would have to do is just turn to the Lord and say God I'm sorry for my sin be merciful to me 
come into my heart and forgive me, oh God. All they will have to do, but they won't go. Father, help us today. Help us to stay faithful. In Jesus' name. Amen. Singing together, Christ returneth, number 156. It may be at war with the days of waking, when sunlight through darkness and shadow is breaking, that Jesus will Watch over and guide us, 
bring us back at the next point in time, and we'll worship you even more. In my name of my Lord Jesus Christ, with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Amen.